Welcome back. Today I have another Palantir stock update to share. I have not done one of these in a while, but we'll see. Palantir here just breaching $27. Let's see how many minutes ago, 14 minutes ago as I record this. Now, why is this a big deal? Well, we know Palantir stock is so volatile. And if we take a look at the six month chart, we'll see in the summer around here, we had a run past $27 up to $27.75 if I am recalling that correctly. And it met some resistance there. So we had a collapse before earnings, strong recovery after earnings, this being the Q2 earnings report, of course. And now we are back almost to the point at which we were before. Now, what does this mean? Breaking news, the stock can either go up or down from here. I'm not here to tell you that. What I am more interested in and what is what the company itself is doing. So another news item is that Lilium, the first SPAC that Palantir actually invested in, just got listed under its own ticker today. Of course, this was a SPAC. You'll see not performing extraordinarily well today, but it is now officially listed. If you're interested in Lilium, of course, you could have bought Shell Company before, but good to see that they are now officially live on the market. I do like to follow in a general sense how well their SPAC investments are actually doing. I do like to follow in a general sense how well their SPAC investments are doing. So they're now again on the NASDAQ as LILM, the ticker there, and they're ringing the closing bell later today. Well, I'm sure you've probably seen by now, if you haven't, it's linked in the description. I just had a conversation with Sachin Sharma, an all around really great investor and someone that is very insightful in many different industries. We talked Palantir, we talked bear case, bull case, everything in between competition or the lack thereof. And he shared some incredible thoughts. So definitely go check that out. But I actually asked him a question in a tweet, one that I forgot to ask during our conversation, which I can just pull that up here. My question being, why can't Palantir ease the dilution, of course, that being the stock-based compensation, as everyone knows, and just instead pay higher salaries as one of their means of talent attraction and retention with, with their cash war chest? We know they are now debt-free. They have so much cash. It's going to continue to build up. Why not stop the dilution and pay from some of that cash to their employees, increase the salaries in that regard? So I think that's a pretty straightforward question, but Sachin was quick to point out what the real answer is here. And of course, Palantir is not completely missing something huge. There is a reason for it. So stock-based compensation's primary purpose is to create a shadow of the future and bring employee skin into the game. If salaries are increased to reduce the stock-based compensation, competition has less barrier to these employees using signing bonuses. And employees in high stock-based compensation companies know that changing companies comes at a cost. And since stock-based compensation allocation and options have grant and maturation dates, the effective barrier increases as the date approaches. Also, if Palantir believes that cash saved has a better ROI if deployed back into the business, it makes sense for stock-based compensation. So this is kind of where I still don't understand. I almost think at this point that they have more cash than they would be willing to or even need to invest back into the business. $2 billion and growing. I'm not sure their business is very capital intensive. So I certainly get the point here. But at the same time, I think what Palantir is going for, at least management, saying you can't go wrong with being overly cautious and incredibly safe to have the ability to pay salaries even like a decade out into the future. So we have that. Let's continue on with what Sachin had to say. Palantir has a healthy cash position, but they still don't have excess cash position. So I guess that's in ad that I guess that's addressing my concern that I just brought up. They still need to invest for growth and maintaining core company culture by ensuring key employees stay longer. So now that's interesting. Are they or aren't they using cash for that? If we believe in PLTR's growth story, that means 20 to 60 billion in revenue by 2030 to 2035. So I think it is a fine line. And it's very interesting because Palantir at this point seems to be choosing, we're going to do stock-based compensation instead of paying higher salaries, pretty much. That's, that's how they're doing it. That is good for the company, but bad for investors. At least that's how I see it. So the company doesn't have to give any of their cash away. They're they're issuing the dilution, they're creating shares, and they're giving those as a way to incentivize their employees to stay for the long term and through the benefit of the company. Obviously, we've talked about this before. Now, the bad part is that dilution. The good part is what happens to the stock. Now, 
if these employees are able to stay and able to create significant value for the long-term future of this stock, then it's a win-win for everyone. So really, it is a moot point at, at the end of the day, really, if you are a long-term investor and are convicted in this company. But I did want to bring that color that Sachin had shared with uh, with my question. So last thing for today, we have a new video produced by Palantir. Now, I love these videos. These are amazing. These are marketing material, of course, not necessarily targeted at everyday consumers or anything like that, and not investors either, but maybe slightly a little bit. Mainly, these are for their target audience, someone in charge of a business, running a business, whether that's an executive or someone in a leadership position or someone underneath saying this is this could really make a big difference in our business, in our enterprise. So I do want to play this because not only is it great to watch these anyway, I do think this is one of the best ones they've made yet. So I'll just play it. And if you've already seen it, you can definitely skip ahead. But I certainly recommend watching it. I'm going to watch it for the third time right now. Every day around the world, things are breaking. Inherent volatility is pushing our systems beyond the breaking point. We see it in the fragility of our supply chains and we feel it in our day-to-day -day lives. Simultaneously, we are in a period of rapid innovation. Technology is advancing by the day and yet failing to address the challenges that matter the most. Why is this happening? Most enterprise software is designed to solve every problem in the same way, providing very narrow or very rigid solutions. When the unexpected happens, these technologies hamstring organizations' ability to respond, wasting crucial time and draining budgets with each incremental investment. Palantir's software was developed for the world's most complex environments, the situations where the only certainty is uncertainty. The same software is now equipping corporate organizations with the capability they need to survive and thrive. For times when you need to execute a pivotal transition. For when being the first and the fastest matters. For when you must achieve greatness in the midst of crisis. Palantir can integrate your systems in hours, allowing you to take control of your data, anticipate challenges before they arise, and survive in the world today while building for the world of tomorrow. So I really love that, as I said, the only certainty is uncertainty. And look, YouTube knows me so well. There you have it. I wanted to bring all of these ideas together. We have Lilium that is now listed. We have Palantir stock breaking through 27. Looks like selling off a bit here. Not much you can do about that. But we also have Palantir going out, producing more market material. And it really is great when they're able to find a singular way to say, this is what we're doing. This is how we can help your business. So that's where I'll leave it for today. Let me know what else you want to hear me cover in the future. Until next time.